call the meeting to order. And I also would like to announce that this meeting is being video recording um, by Mary Larkin. And we thank you very much for being here. And also, we need to approve the minutes of June 18th and September 17th. All in favor? Um, actually, I move that we amend the September minutes to reflect the Scrivener's error uh, that uh, were, the July 16th minutes were approved in the September meeting, but it wasn't included in the minutes. So I'd like to have that sure. amended. And um, so I, I, I second with them the amendment. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so we approved June 18th and September 17th, and we did an amendment on the um, July 16th minutes. Um, we Would have you mind saying where Jean Tacey is? I was going oh, right now. Yeah. And also, Councilor Tacey is absent. He's not well this evening. Okay, um, I would like to speak about the agendas for the months of November and December. At 5, 10 p.m., I have Jennifer Guerin. Guerin? Guerin? Yeah, sure. yeah. She's the managing attorney from Community Legal Aid, and um, I think it's going to be great to have um, Jennifer here. Um, it's a new program that we've approved with um, the Community Development Block Grants. Um, also, at 5.30 p.m., I have Louisa Plump who's the program manager of Starlight Center, and Kim Britt, who's the program coordinator of Starlight Center. And this is the first time that we've had this agency coming, and I went to their anniversary. I was invited to go that, Bill was, and all the counselors. I sent them invitations, and I was very, very impressed. It was almost similar to what I've seen at ServiceNet with sharing our stories. It was amazing what some of the members of Starlight Center were talking about and how their lives were improved. And then at 6 o'clock, I have Karen Jarvis Vance, Director of Health Services and Health Education and Safety. Um, Glenn Johnson, Northampton Prevention Coalition Coordinator. And Marissa Hebel, who's the Environmental Strategic Specialist. And they're going to be giving us and present an update of their most recent data collection on youth substance use in Northampton, as well as collation funding, staffing, and activities over the past year and plans for the coming year. And they did a fantastic job in social services and veterans affairs about a year and a half ago. Then we had them come to city council and do a presentation. It was great. So, so I'm very. And for the month of what happened to my December? Yeah. Is that on here? No, wait a minute. Which one is that, Bill? This is November meeting. You got here. Okay, I have it here. It's got to be somewhere. And the December one that I have, hmm, I wonder what happened to that one. Well, I don't need it anyways. I have. Casa Latina coming in at, let's say, 5 o'clock, I have Steve Connors coming in, and then at 5.30, I have Casa Latina um, coming in, and the co-director who will be coming in and giving us a whole layout of what that program's all about and what is actually happening to their program. There, there's going to be some cuts, and I was not too happy about hearing that. And also, she is bringing in some members of the Family with Powers. 
and I've met them before at City Council, and they're really great. So she's bringing them in as guests so that they can speak of what they're doing also. So it's kind of like a short um, meeting for us because we're getting pretty close to Christmas and that, so we didn't want to overdo it. But, I mean, I'm already booked up going straight through now to March. So that's that. So now we're waiting for um, Claire Higgins. Mar Marissa Hebbles coming to speak about what? Is it environmental strategic specialist. That's what she's all about. Well, she's, so she's not talking about... No, uh, no. That's what her... She goes, hey, how are you doing? Hey, how are you? Oh, look who's there. Oh, who's that? Who is that? Is this some stranger rolled in? Hi. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's very clear. Yeah. Also, too, Bill. I thought I you've got the schedule, right? I yeah, I just I just I just transcribed it, so. Okay, you can have that. Well, it's, yeah, it's, I got it. You saw where the change of dates are for our meetings, where the stars are. January fourteenth. It's the same as this. Okay. Yeah. Okay. February eleventh, because oh, of the holidays. Very clear. You can. Why don't you just bring a chair right up with us? I'll sit on the corner there. Okay. Is this it? You the whole committee? This is it. Uh, Council Tracy's out. Bill. L. Bill. 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 Also, I'd like to um, announce if there's any public comment. Mary, would you like to speak? Oh, thank you. No. Okay. <laughs> That's Lida. Lida's here. Lida, would you like to speak for public comment? No, thank you. Okay. Thank you for offering. You're welcome. I'll sit in my old seat. <coughs> there you go. That's, that's your very old seat. No, this is my old seat. This is your old seat. Yeah, yeah. That's right. That's my new seat. Yeah. This is our schedule. Let's see. What time are you coming? You're coming in at 510. Right. Yeah, sorry I'm late. No, 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 it's fine. We're just we're, we're timing up perfectly. Mary Claire Higgins, who is the Executive Director of Community Action. Uh, Mary Claire is here this evening with us on Social Services and Veterans Affairs. And Mary Claire, we want to thank you for being here. Sure. Very happy to have you here to talk about and give us an overview of Community Action. So, thank you. Thanks for having me. It's nice to see you all again. Is that, are you filming with an iPad? Yeah. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, no. Yeah, the technology has changed a lot. Of um, the flip cameras are already passe. Yeah, they're on. They, yeah, they're kind of discontinued. Funny. They're not even making them. I know. So, um, Community <laughs> Action is um, the anti-poverty agency for Hampshire, Franklin, and the North Boston regions here in western Massachusetts. We cover about 1,400 square miles and have about 30,000 clients a year. Um, our, our charge is to help better the lives of people with, who are living with low incomes. Um, so um, we also now are on the Head Start program for Western Hamden County, that is the, the cities and towns on the west side of the Connecticut River. So the major cities on that side of the river are Agawa, and Westfield, and West Springfield. And that program was run by the Westfield School System. They went out to bid last year, and we bid for it, and we were awarded the contract. So we now have not only Head Start in Hampshire and Franklin counties, but also Head Start in Western Hampshire counties. So we're actually from the Vermont border to the, to the Connecticut border on the western side of the Connecticut River. If you add Hamden County in, we now have about 790 square miles in our service area. We have about 350 employees. Uh, the budget is this year about $28 million. How much? $28 million. Um, about um, 13 million of that is what's called pass-through money goes directly to help pay for people's fuel bills to pay the cost of weatherizing your homes or to pay for their child care 
we run seven major programs. I've brought annual reports for you, and then I brought some Northampton statistics um, to tell you what we're doing right in Northampton. I'm making you work, Bill. That's... That's your aerobics for the whole day now. <laughs> Mary, you got a copy of this for Mary here, too? I do. I have a copy for anybody who would like. Go, Mary. Um, this is last year's annual report, and if you, um, it's just a good overview of the organization. Our, our board president is on the inside cover, uh, Sarah Kemble, who is a doctor, and who helped start the Franklin, who was actually the founding doctor at the Franklin Medical Center. Um, I'm going to direct your attention to, um, uh, I think it's the first, second, third page in. Um, Gives you some sense of the services where you say care and support for the most vulnerable. The page that looks like that. We did try to find the cutest children we possibly could find. <laughs> and I think we were pretty successful. Um, we fed. Next page. Okay, nope. One more page. One more page. Thank you. Um, we fed 3,800 people, 154 tons of food. We uh, provided nutritious, free food for 4,400 infants. We run the Women, Infants, and Children program, the the WIC program for Hampshire County, for Franklin County. 19,000 people um, uh, staying safe and warm in their homes. That, that's a uh, fuel assistance and plus weatherization. We also run a, um, a program that helps people who have, are victims of crime deal with trauma. And we also run a mediation service for people who are struggling to, with dispute resolution who are trying to avoid the court system. Mm. We, um, have, we run um, child care a program, and as well as full Head Starts, we run full day and part day early childhood programs. Included in those child care programs are, are spaces for 124 children who have open cases with the Department of Children and Families. So family, for some reason, the child has been identified as being abused and neglected, and child care and other services are part of their uh, service plan, and we care for that child. Um, we, we also run youth programming. Um, we have helped 40, 40 youth in Hampshire, in Franklin County, um, over the last year, either move ahead in their career path by either finding employment or further into education in our WIA youth uh, contract. And this year, we were just awarded the WIA youth contract for also Frank Hampshire County. So we'll be running WIA youth for Franklin and Hampshire County. WIA is the federal funding source. We run um, so support groups for. Uh, gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgendered, and questioning youth that have been very, um, I think, well-received. Um, is that? Gen, Gen Q. Is that the ones that are right down here? It was here? in Maple Whoop Shop. We moved out of that uh, site because it wasn't handicapped accessible. We're in the process now of trying to find handicapped accessible space in the city. Very oh, difficult. So we're not there anymore. Right now, we're squatting. Um, we're, we're going from place to place. We're um, doing a... a, a week to week at the James House just for groups until okay. we find a place to be. Because I went down there and, and I said... Well, you know what we've decided? So uh, let me finish going through the overview okay. and then I'll talk to you about Northampton in specific. Okay. Okay? Yep. Um, if you, I talked about fuel and motherization. Yep. I talked about WIC, Women, Infants, and Children. Oh, by the way, we not only run give WIC, uh, WIC coupons, which allow people to go get bread and milk and, and juice and all kinds of good things like that. We also... Um, run a, um, a program to encourage breastfeeding with new moms and have had a very high rate of success with that. And also do a um, really interesting program uh, where, where we have staff that go to the grocery store with families that have their WIC coupons and help them figure out how to make those WIC coupons stretch further. So, oh. so we have a shopping program for them. Right so there. can you explain that, maybe? So you get a coupon from WIC. And how much is it worth? You know what, I'm not going to remember exactly how much they're worth, but you can only use them on certain things, right? You oh, can okay. use them on certain certain kinds of uh, groceries. So uh, Colleen Paris will go with, with somebody, meet them at Big Y, and say, okay, now you know if you buy this and you combine it with this, you can make three different meals with this. Oh. And she'll really walk them through what the possibilities are. Oh, okay. Do a lot of nutrition counseling there. We mm -hmm. run a, a food pantry in, in Greenfield and a food pantry in Shelburne. Of course, we don't run one here because the Survival Center does exactly. such a good job. But if, you may not remember this, but the Survival Center started in the basement of the Vernon Street School, mm -hmm. um, which was where HCAC was when exactly. I was a teacher there many yep. years ago. Um, an incubator. It was kind of an incubator. It was run by, opened by separate people, but it, but it was a way of helping <laughs> to get it off the ground. Um, 
we uh, run a, something called the a, a, called the VITA program, Volunteer Income, Income Tax Assistance Program. We brought one point two million dollars back to this region through the VITA program last year. Wow. Volunteers helping people for free to file their income taxes and get that money back. If they went to H and R Block, they charge H and R Block. You've seen the ads. They say this is free. Yeah, Filing, right. It's not free. Uh -huh. It's only free if you file the easy form. If you if you need their help to file the easy form then good, you should go to them. But the, the, the big money is in, um, <laughs> I was trying to be kind, but I don't mind him. Um, the big money for them is in the earned income tax credit forms where people get money back from the federal government. And um, we do those for free with people, for income eligible people. So last year, as I said, we brought back about $1.2 million. The previous year we brought $1.4 million because we had more money to run the program and we were able to reach more people. Oh, that's so this year we're hoping to be able to reach more people again. Oh. Um, we run extensive homelessness services, including inter intervening with folks, intervening in court and helping to mediate um, disputes in the court system, both through our mediation program and through our housing program. We just were awarded the Emergency Solutions Grant from HUD that was through the continuum of care that PEG ran, mm -hmm. which is now um, run by Hilltown CDC. We were just awarded that grant, which which gives us some money that we can use to help avoid homelessness with people who are, who are at imminent risk of homelessness. So we're working with people, primarily people who are already in subsidized housing who are at risk of losing their housing because if you're in subsidized housing and you lose that housing, you're not eligible for shelter services in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Wow. So we want to try to hold, preserve those tenancies mm -hmm. to the best extent possible. We also uh, fundraise a significant amount of money, or uh, not as much as we would like, but we fundraise money every year that we use to help people offset a back rent or to help pay a utility bill. Uh, if Let's say they used up all their fuel assistance mm -hmm. and they still need help. We have some extra resources that we can help pay up some bills with, and we've done that over, over many years. We run the former First Call for Help, which is an information yeah. and referral line that C CDBG uh, in Northampton funds, among other funding sources, and we, people call us and ask for help. Somebody's calling for help right now. No, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, I, can I just? Yes. Hi, Christina. Uh, good. I'm in the middle of a meeting. Can I call you back in about an hour? Okay, thank you. Bye. Okay. I've been waiting for her call all day. I'm, I'm, it's okay. Figures, right? It, it always works that way. Uh -huh. So, uh, anyway, we, um, <coughs> what was I talking about? Uh, first call. From first, her. first call, which is now not we, we call it community services and, and and asset development. So we we people can call when they call. We offer them the immediate referral if that's what they want. We offer them financial counseling. We help them put together a budget if that's helpful. If they need a little cash, mm -hmm. we can use some of that fundraise money or other money that we have. We also can help them get onto things like food stamps, hook them up with uh, fuel assistance or other resources we might have. That's great. In addition to that, we run an IDA program, Individual Development Account Program, where people work as a group to save money at meeting with a group. We have a staffer that works with them on financial matters, and um, they work towards a goal, buying a house. Um, going back to school, starting a business. And I think we've had, I think, for some reason, 30 graduates sticks in my mind. And for, wow. for when they save their money, the money is matched by the by uh, local banks that yeah. help match that money that they've saved to help them get to their goal. It's wow. a really great program. That sounds good. Um, I've already mentioned Head Start. That's probably our largest program. About 200, more than 200 people that work for us work for Head Start. Um, and as I said, that's the largest geographically as well. Those children get full day, either part day or full day, comprehensive care, including uh, care and education, including um, early childhood education, um, full day care, you know, for kids who have to stay all day, yeah. um, nutrition program, uh, um, health program, including um, work with uh, health professionals to make sure immunizations are up to date, doctor's visits are up to date, et cetera. Uh, social service support if the par if the family needs it, and um, a family self sufficiency planning that is done in conjunction with the parent. Um, That's huge. Uh, fuel assistance is an income based program. If you meet the assets and income test, we can give you fuel assistance. If you're eligible for fuel assistance, we can also come in and help weatherize your your house. 
So we do um, a significant amount of uh, fuel, I think close to um, seven or eight million dollars in fuel, and then an additional millions of dollars in um, in weatherization, one or two million dollars, one point one million dollars in weatherization. So, and that saves people an awful lot of money. If we sure get does. in there and weatherize those homes, it saves mm -hmm. people a lot of money on their mm -hmm. fuel bills. Um, so I think if you remember, David and I, while you were mayor, wanting to be right. the energy right. you know efficiency that's, going You on. know that's been something I've been caring, I care about for a long time. Exactly. So it's great to be in an agency that's really working. I on know. Um, the um, uh, we also um, run. I mentioned our youth programs. Um, I want to mention one particularly interesting program that our youth program is running, where it participates in, in in Franklin County, which is the Communities That Care Coalition, and it's similar to the Northampton Prevention Coalition. It's at the bottom of the page, and um, yep, and that Glenn Johnson is working on here in Northampton. Um, the Communities That Care Coalition has really come together to reduce substance use and abuse uh, in, with with adolescents in in Franklin County, and their numbers are dramatic. The number the drop off in terms of kids using substances in Franklin County because of the way they've come together are really dramatic. Just and I'm hoping down. to see, you know, we're, we're going to be participating here in, in the city and in Hampshire County too, great. which would be great. Okay. Um, mediation and training, I mentioned the mediation and we also do the, um, the work with folks who have had a, a trauma due to crime or drunk driver, things like family support programs. Mm -hmm. We run a family parent-child home program and the Healthy Families Program, which are home visiting programs for people with young kids, so it's a very isolating time when you have a small child, you can be in your home by yourself, and, or it can be very isolating. So we have programs where people go into the home and work with the parent, help them connect with community services, or, or connect with other families, which is really important that people have connections with other people. In Greenfield, we have a family center, a, a DCF family center designated where, or, I'm sorry, Children's Trust Fund designated <coughs> um, center where we run parent support groups, we run um, parent education groups, we also have a GED program now. Oh, that's love excellent. To see, love to see us be able to do more of that in, in Hampshire County. Right now we're just doing it in Greenfield. Oh. By the way, we have a house in Orange where we have WIC, First Call for Help type services, youth programming, and, um, uh, and we also share that space with the um, Franklin County Home Care uh, takes, uses it sometimes, and also the Regional Housing Authority uses it sometimes. So it's a little bit of a community center up in Orange. Hmm. Uh, and I think that's it. I think I've run through all the programs. Um, so what's that's going on in Northampton? That's so a lot. That? Yeah, we do a lot. Um, and I, I can't believe I remember that. I, I want to talk a minute about how we're governed, and then I'll go to what goes in, okay. in Northampton. Yep, that'd be fine. Because we're a community action agency, that's a specific kind of agency that it grew out of the anti-poverty um, legislation of the 60s. Um, so anti-poverty agencies are, there's one per region, or one per town, or one per, you don't have two or three of them, I guess is what I'm saying. So we're the designated anti-poverty agency for Hampshire and Franklin counties. In, in Holyoke, it's the Valley Opportunity Council, Holyoke, Chicopee, Ludlow. In Springfield, it's Springfield Partners for Change. In Berkshire County, it's Berkshire Community Action Commission. And you see, so each one has, you know, Massachusetts Opportunity Council up in the Athol, Gardner, Winchenden area. So every region of the state has a different one. There are about 170 towns in the Commonwealth that don't actually have a community action agency. Hmm. But, but Hampshire County, in 1966 or 67, the, the county commissioners requested a designation for the whole county. And in, um, and the Franklin County commissioners did, requested a designation. A, a, uh, designation of a cap agency for the whole county. And then, as you recall, when HCAC closed, Hampshire, the Franklin Community Action Commission got the designation for both Fr Hampshire and Franklin County. Hmm. Um, our board is made up of 24 people, 24 representatives. Eight of them are elected from the low income community, or, or, or from people who have low incomes. Oh, we wow. send out 4,000 ballots, 2,000 to Hampshire County, 2,000 to Franklin County, to our client base. To ask them to, I think it's more than four thousand now. I think about it, with with nominees, and we we reach out to the community for nominees. So oh. four people who are on the board this year from Hampshire County are Carmen Montes, Aneta Garcia, um, Gwen Bass, 
and I'm gonna, I'm still, we have new board members, so I'm still kind of learning everybody's name. But well, um, there's one other member. Anita. She lives on my ward. Anita. Oh, oh I'm sorry. Anita Garcia. Yeah. Anita Garcia. But you know who else? Um, um, Karen Mandeville is the fourth representative from really? Hampshire County. Really? Right. Yeah, I asked her to run, and she did, and I was very happy about wow. that. Wow. So, um, so the, and Gwen Bass lives in Amherst. Mm hmm So we have pretty good representation in Hampshire County, and then in Franklin County there are four other people, including, you, I think maybe even two reps from the Orange... Royalston, Templeton, that whole North Quam area. In North Quam. Yeah. Now, Orange, that's a very small town, right? Very it's small. It's a very small, very poor it, town. Very poor. Yeah. It's the, that whole area of the Quam Valley is pretty depressed. Right. So mm. I think one of the most depressed regions one in the most, state. Really? Franklin County is the poorest county in the state, and, and the North Quam is one of the poorest regions of in the Franklin poorest county, county yeah. in the state. Yeah. So it's... It, and, well, so, the Quabbin is pretty close to Belchertown. The Quabbin goes from Belchertown all the way north to up where? to, to um, Orange and Apple. And up Apple. on the north side. Oh, okay. Shootsbury, no Orange, Apple, yeah. all that are up on that north side. Oh. So eight people who are represented in, uh, who are representing um, folks who have low incomes. Um, eight people who are private sector reps, so that from businesses or nonprofits, and eight people who are appointed by elected officials. And so um, Stan Rosenberg has a, a I think Stan has one, Alan Story, Jim McGovern, Will, uh, John Oliver has a, a rep. Um, so it, there's eight different people I see what you mean. that are, are appointed by elected officials. And when the merger of the two agencies happened, the way that Franklin County had always done it was by state reps or state senators or uh, representatives in Congress. So that's the way they did it. Okay. Um, so what's happening in Northampton? Here's some statistics from this year, from this past fiscal year. So July 1. 2011 to June 30th, 2012. Oh, Thank you. Okay. We're getting old. I have a friend who is in her, I think she's in her late 70s now. She, she's great. And I think we were joking because we were getting out of a chair in the morning. And she said she saw this thing. Sophia Loren was interviewed and somebody said, how do you stay so youthful? And she said, I never moan when I get up from a chair. <laughs> <laughs> she right. be so my that's house. my new goal. Yeah. <laughs> No more moaning. Oh. And then uh, maybe I'll look like Sophia Loren. What do you think? I'm you know? sure, you know, that... <laughs> Stay the way you are. Intelligent. <laughs> so at the top, what I did was... To, I, he had to run it by zip code. So you have Northampton, Florence, and Leeds, and then unduplicated total is the three put together. And then below that is what the percentage of the household or population is, okay? So about 11% of the households in Northampton have received some sort of services from community action. And about... 2,500 people, which is a little less than 10% of the population. So, under fuel. So, under fuel. In Northampton. About, about 1,000 households. That's a lot. It's, about, it's a little, well, it's about it's about 9% of the households. Wow. Yeah. Um, and, and in those households lived 1,900 individuals. Okay? Yeah. WIC. Um, 527 individuals. PCDC, which is our, PCDC stands for Parent Child Development Center. So that includes our family child care, our center-based child care, uh, our, our center-based full and part day Head Start programming, I should say. Our, and our family, um, our family um, child care, which includes Head Start programming. And they also have a home visiting program, Head Start does. Mm -hmm. So uh, 200, uh, 410 children served. Um, VITA, remember I talked about that? That's the tax assistance program. We helped 150 people in the, in, in, in the city of Northampton do their taxes. Wow. Okay? Wow. 99 households. So some people came in with two, you know, with two returns in the household or... Yeah. Yeah, but... And then youth programs, um, 24 households, again, doubled with, you know, more than that in terms of kids. I, I'm not sure exactly how that works. Some of those kids may not have had it... Uh, a fixed address, so we might not be showing up at the household. It's not clear to me. Okay. And then SCAD is um, Community Services and Asset Development. That's what that stands for. That includes our first call, our vi everything but VITA. I included there. First call, the food bank, all that other stuff. Now, I don't have statistics here for mediation and I, um, because we're still working on how we're keeping this. Okay. Well, and I don't have some, weatherization because we're still working on that. Something's discretionary, I imagine. 
Well, you know, what's interesting about uh, TMTC, it's called the Mediation and Training Collaborative, um, some of those, most of those folks are income eligible and some are over income. We don't, you can be over income and receive those services and recharge if you're <coughs> or not. Um, also, at, at PCDC, some of those families are over income and, and are on a sliding fee scale for their full day, full year child care, and some could pay full fee. So, going into this coming fiscal year, we're looking at a couple uh, things. One is that we, up until this year, have been running the child care voucher program, where we issue vouchers to families for them to pay for their child care. We're going to drop that this year. Why? Well, for a couple reasons. Um, it, it's um, we're getting about half the money, about half the money the state originally started paying to run that program, and the expectations are really high. We have a huge geographic area. And quite frankly, we don't think we can run as good a program as we want to run with our name on it. So we don't think it's, we, you know, there may be somebody else can run it better because they have the economy of scale to mm -hmm. run it better. What's, I'm sorry, what's the name of the program? Child Care Outlook. Okay. Um, so we're going to run it till January, till, till the end of December. It and how many be, are involved in that? We had about three employees, but you really need about six employees to run it, mm -hmm. or seven. So we're, we're not going to do that. That's about $5 million worth of vouchers that are issued per year. That's a lot. That's a lot of vouchers, right. Um, and I'm not sure who's going to end up getting the contract, but there are other people in Western Mass who bid on the contract. And if the area is not going to go unserved, but we're not going to be the one who's doing it. We also had a little bit of a conflict of interest because we're also, we also take vouchers for child care. So oh. we were issuing them, okay. and we were taking them. Yeah. So that's always been a little bit of a conflict. So. I think mm -hmm. we're all comfortable with this decision. So we're going to we'll shrink a little bit in terms of our agency size. So you're going to get rid of that in January? In January. The sequestration that's coming up on the federal level. Where I, was, I was going to ask you yeah, about that. So, um, about 60% of our money comes from the feds. So, and all of our money that is federal money is looking at being cut by the, um, under this um, Budget Reconciliation Act, what they call the sequestration where all the domestic programs that are covered by this would be cut by about eight and a half percent. That would make a significant difference to us, eight and a half percent. So mm -hmm. look at those Head Start kids, it's 410. We'd be, at, we'd, we'd be serving 38 less kids, fewer kids. Um, we'd be serving for fuel, if it's eight percent, we'd be giving out a hundred, you know, we'd, we'd uh, I don't have the dollar amount here, but eight percent of whatever the nine million is, is, is um, close to a million dollars, mm -hmm. right? So it, it's a significant amount of money that we could conceivably use, lose. Um, we're working That's to try to hold on to that money. WIC, I'm also worried about. WIC is not exempt from the sequestration. And I, I would say this, it's really important. For a lot of our kids in our PCDC program, that's their meal. When they come to, 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 to their early childhood program, they eat breakfast, they eat snack, and they eat lunch, and they get an afternoon snack. And those are their meals. When they go home, there's not necessarily a meal. Really? Yeah. Some of them, don't, the parents don't have the, the w wherewithal to put that last meal on the table. Wow. Oh, that's sad. And sometimes the reason they can put the meal on the table is because they have WIC. If mm -hmm. WIC is cut, if the food and nutrition program is cut, that reduces our ability to put the best meal we possibly can on the table. It's going to make a big difference. And I'm very worried about fuel. Last year, we raised... Last year we were cut on the fuel, and then at the very last minute, the, the, they put back some of it, and then the state put some money in. We're lobbying the state this year to put some money in for fuel. And we raised close to $40,000, and we had $16,000 in the bank, and we gave all of it away mm. because people needed that. Yeah. So we are trying this year to raise a similar, you know, we're going to try to raise a like amount of money, and you're all going to get a card, <coughs> looking for a donation. Get prepared. From your princely sum that you get for being a city council. When, um, what type of fundraising do you do? Uh, what we do, we have a couple different fundraisers, and people are doing fundraisers all year. We just did a race with um, the Sheriff's Department in Franklin County. Yeah. We're hoping that will raise a couple of thousand dollars for the Family Support Program. Okay. Um, we do an annual appeal where we send out a mailing and ask for money to help pay for um, things like fuel or back rent for people, and that's administered through our community resources, our community services and asset development department. Mm -hmm. The case managers in there work with the family. They'll work on their finances with them. They'll try to figure out how to plug the gaps, and if they need a little bit of extra assistance, they'll go to that fund. Mm -hmm. um, 
So you Each don't different, do... Uh, different programs do other kinds of fundraising during the year. We also are writing grants pretty much nonstop. So uh -huh. we write, I don't know, I, I think I added up all the funding sources, something like 60 different funding sources, you know, that we have to write grants for on a regular basis. We have to go out and find that money. Mm -hmm. So United Way of Hampshire County, United Way of Franklin County, um, we have uh, grants from any number of foundations that we're writing to all the time, plus the larger grants, the state grants for early childhood, state mm -hmm. grants for youth programming, federal grants for youth programming, energy money that we have to write grants for. So we're writing grants all the time. Is your office always going to be in Greenfield, or are you going to be looking at... We, so that's, uh, that segues very nicely into the next thing I want to talk about. So the main office is in Greenfield, and the, and the agency owns... I don't know if you know the building that we're in. We're in 393 Main Street, which is the old Masonic Temple there, which is kind mm -hmm. of a cool old building. We own the basement, most of half the third floor and all of the fourth floor. It's the building that GCTV is, Greenfield Community Television. Okay. And they own the other half of the third floor where their studio is, mm -hmm. the half the third floor. And all our client services are on the fourth floor, will be soon, we're finishing moving them up. Weatherization's on the first floor and they rent and then we rent space down the street for fuel assistance. Our, that's our main site, and um, that's our main administrative site. In Franklin County, we have a site at 90 Federal Street for Family Support Program, Family Center, which is a um, rented site, and because they're a Children's Trust, Trust Fund Family Center, we're, all, we're always gonna be there. We don't have okay. a family center in, in Hampshire County because we're not de we don't have that money. If we ever write a grant or able to do that, we'll do it. Um, we own a building uh, on, also on Federal Street that the youth programs are in okay. for, for Franklin County. We have a, um, and we own the house. We own the house in Orange, which is kind of a community service center in Orange. Mm -hmm. a community Action took over the, the uh, operation of the Vernon Street School, and at Vernon Street we have five classrooms, um, uh, including an infant classroom, a toddler classroom, and three preschool classrooms. Uh, upstairs we have offices for Healthy Families, Parent Child Home, PCDC, Community Services and a Asset Development has a Hampshire County site there, um, and um, Fuel take, meets clients there. At, at, oh, that's Street. good. So they don't have to go and, to Greenfield. And, and youth, youth programs, as I said, was renting at Maplewood. Right. We're now looking for a site downtown where we can have Fuel, Community Services and Asset Development, and youth programs, so that teachers don't have to be monitoring people coming in and out of the building, in a building yep. that is primarily a children's services building. And then we're going to have, um, WIC will stay there. WIC has three days a week, I think, at Vernon Street. So mm -hmm. it makes sense for WIC to stay there, but these other programs, I think we're going to try to move closer to downtown. Mm -hmm. That'd try be to great. Be the bus line. Um, Vernon Street needs a significant amount of work. The boiler is 750 years old, I think. Maybe a little bit longer. Maybe it's been with us a little bit longer. Just burn peat. Yeah. <laughs> you know, when I worked in that building, 600 years ago, I worked in there, I think it was like 1982 or something, the boiler went out, and we took turns sleeping overnight there to make sure that the emergency boiler was lit up. Oh, we had a little goodness. TV plugged in. Oh, <laughs> the classrooms. Geez. We slept on cots. Oh. But for about a week, we had to take turns sleeping over at the hospital. I think the boiler is probably in great shape, but the burner is not in very good shape, and we're kind of worried about that, and that's something we're going to be want to talk to the city about. It's owned by the city. We rent it for a dollar a year. It needs significant capital investment. There we go. We need to have a discussion about whether or not it's worth making the capital investment on that building or not. One thing that makes sense to do sooner rather than later is to, um, it's, a, it's heated with oil. If we're going to put any money in a burner, it really makes sense for it to be a gas burner, not an oil burner. But we've converted all the municipal systems right. to natural gas right. centers now. So. Yeah. And as you know, we didn't look at that building as part, as part of the ESCO, right. and, and I think that was appropriate to not look at that building as part of the ESCO. But there should be some thinking about that building because it's, it, 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 listen, it's great for us in terms of the classrooms and yeah. all that, and the playground is great. But I'm pretty sure the roof needs work. I'm pretty sure the windows need work. It needs a major weatherization work done to it. I'll tell you a story, Miriam. When I worked there as a teacher, you know, 1979, I think I was the closing teacher. I worked 3 to, three to 5.30, and I locked the place up. I'm in my classroom, and this person bangs on the door, and I go out, and it's Jim Brooks. Oh. And he said to me, 
I flew a helicopter over this building, and it, heat's leaking all over the place. He said, you got to do something. This is government money. You're leaking heat. And he went on and on. <laughs> and I, I didn't know him. <laughs> Why was Jim Brooks flying a helicopter over the building? And oh, how my could he tell goodness. It was heat? I, he took thermal pictures. He took thermal pictures. <laughs> wow. Didn't Dating. you know he was flying United? I, uh, it was the know. funny. And I, I'm like, what the heck? Anyway, but in reality, if Jim Brooks in heaven looked down, he would see all the leakage. <laughs> from this building. And I would expect a report from he'd him. He'd be going, <laughs> yeah, he'd be going, Mary Clear, what did I tell you? He would come and testify before the council. Did oh, I tell yeah. you about the time when I first got elected and he came running in to show me his bunion surgery? Whipped his shoes off right in my office, stuck his feet up on the desk. No. It's, he also presented his certification that he was indeed sane. Sane, that's right. <laughs> so, um, so that building, we're, we're really having to think about, you know, and we're looking at it in a number of other buildings that in Turner's Falls we own a building that, that was oil burner. We just worked with a gas company that bring a gas line another 100 feet down G Street so that we can hook it up to the, the gas and have and, and really reduce our cost in that building. And in that case, we own the building. Well, I, would, I would also imagine that the, the bulk of your client base is not necessarily located in North Hampton. Uh, no, uh, these are the people who actually live in Northampton. Well, what, I, what I'm saying is a whole, throughout your whole system, the CAC oh. system, that you, because oh, yeah, you serve such a broad area sure. uh, and, we, and a region that sure. are we, actually You're suffering. one piece of a much larger puzzle. That's absolutely right. We also run a center in Amherst. We also have a Head Start site in Amherst. We have a full day, full year site in Amherst and a part day, part year site in Amherst. We have a, a, a WIC office in Amherst. We also have a, he a Head Start site in Ware, and we also have a fuel assistance and community resources and advocacy site in Ware. So we're, we're spread from I never realized from that. the four corners here. Right? It's, it's a big service area. It is. But Vernon, Vernon Street is where our main office is for um, Parent Child Development Center. So the main office for community action is in Greenfield, but the main office for PCDC is at Vernon Street. When and, do you... And, and, oh. and we are looking when, if we are able to move fuel, community services and, and asset development, and, um, and um, who else are we looking to move at? Youth. Mm -hmm. We may create a small administrative office there for people who need to do some work in, in Northampton. They can stop in there. Kind of a, you know, if I want to pack up my laptop and work there for yeah. a day, I can do there. Or there, our HR director, who, who is really up and down the valley. The other thing we're trying to look at to save money, actually, because we're up and down the valley now, is we're looking at video conferencing for uh, meetings so that we're trying to save from people driving up and down. All there you go. So we're looking at some of those things. The other thing I'll brag on for a minute is the uh, technology is pretty impressive. The, uh, Everybody, just about everybody in the whole system has an email address, and, and it, communication happens through email for just about everything, including mm -hmm. our janitors, including our uh, everybody. Oh, really? Um, oh. Timesheets are all done through the internet, um, and the phone system. Uh, our three county fo phone system is a voice over IP system, so we're not. Um, so everything's the technology is really of the high, uh, of a very high caliber, That's and good. it allowed us to save money. Mm -hmm. and, and maximize services at the same time. When do you think that there would be a possibility, because there's a problem right now at Vernon Street, which I'm hearing about your, the furnace over there. Yeah, I mean, the furnace is working. But Don't get me wrong. but we are, and, and it's working, and we've already done a walkthrough with David Palmer okay. to take a look at it. That's what I was going to ask and you. Actually, when I was over in the mayor's office, we had done a... Um, as an architect to look at the whole building to try to figure out what's going on there. It needs a significant amount of capital investment. Though. So there's, at some point, there's a discussion to have. I don't think it's immediate. I'm just mm -hmm. saying that at some point. At some point, it should be, there should be a discussion. Though. Yeah, because you don't want it to but just... I, you know, I don't want to lose those five classrooms to the city of Northampton. I think they're a huge a benefit to the they are. people in the city of Northampton. So we have to think about, you know, do we fix that building? Do we try to identify another site, either to build new or to um, renovate? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, um, building a little bit on the larger looming things, like yeah. the, the sequestration, um, and also, you know, if you, you know, to play some partisan politics here, if you have a, a 
Republican administration and a Republican Congress and Senate were predisposed to cutting federal funds for programming. Um, uh, Head Start is one of the was one of their you know it's Grover Norquist's uh, yeah uh, he, he wants he wants to eliminate HUD and wants to eliminate any Head Start programming and also given that the rhetoric in this campaign is focused on on literally a class warfare. Um, Mitt Romney had made the statement that he's not worried about the poor because we have safety nets for. Well, we are the safety net. But you are well. That's the that's the point. You are the safety net with right. with with not improving prospects. Yeah. So I, I, a couple things to say about that. I think no, no matter who wins the election, we're in for hard times because in fact there is a big deficit. So how that ma gets managed is, is is an issue, and I think there are going to be some cuts. I think that. You know how those cuts get made will depend on who's in. Well, the sequestration yeah, right. is, is actually designed to to be as as painful as possible right. for mm -hmm. both parties. Right. So, depending on who gets in, it'll make it a difference bit one way or another. Um, what's it, you know when I look at the work we're doing, we're not just working on creating a safety net. We're also trying to create a ladder. I mean, we run a we run youth employment programs. We we provide. Full day, full year childcare, so parents can actually be out in the workforce. It's the infrastructure they need to be in the workforce. We are doing. Um, uh, we run a, a personnel uh, agency called Harmon Personnel, where we help people get part, uh, temp work for as they kind of move into the workforce and try to get on their feet. Um, you know, the Vita program, bringing that kind of money back into the region, makes a huge difference in terms of helping people get take the next steps. So, mm -hmm. it's worrisome. And we're all worried about it, but we're working with our um, delegation, who's been very strong. You know, Jim McGovern especially is really good on, uh, on issues of wealth and poverty, and on he's on the Agriculture Committee, so we're really hoping that he's going to work uh, diligently on the food stamp issue. And, you know, food stamps have come in for a lot of attack on the, in, in, in this. Yeah, they are. And, and um, you know, the history of food stamps is that they were brought in by FDR partly to help farmers. Mm -hmm. to move farm crops. It was an agricultural subsidy program. And the reason why it is overseen by the Agriculture Committee, which is why Jim McGovern, which Jim McGovern is on, is because it's an agriculture subsidy program. It's mm -hmm. not, it was, it, it's great that the poor people get fed by it, but it also helps farmers sell food. That was the okay. theory behind it. I didn't know. Yeah. And so, hmm. so we're working on all that. But I'm not, you know, I'm not a wild, you know, I, no, I don't know how to pick them. I go into municipal government just as a Romney, is, you know, gets elected governor and cuts all the budgets by 20%. Then I leave here. Just as the first year he got new state aid was when I left. I don't know yeah, what that you're right. And then I go to uh, Community Action. Romney's running for president. And I, don't, I, mean, I, so I, I don't know who you ticked my off. Ton, but my timing <laughs> is cosmic. Nah, good one. Bad. <laughs> but, <laughs> But we're gonna, you know, we're gonna fight the good fight. You know, I've been, I've also been around. I was a community action before, and we took a lot of big hits before. You know, under Reagan, we took big hits. Uh, I remember in the '80s, the, the number of cuts that we took then. So we're gonna struggle through. We're gonna struggle through. I have to say, I think on the energy side, one thing that we're seeing uh, is that the feds are putting less money into weatherization, but the um, utility companies, because of things like the Green Community Act, well, are actually just... putting more money in. Well, 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 that's is, good. State's incentivizing. That's yeah. correct. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Green Community Act. So we have seen good money coming into weatherization, on, uh, and we're doing a significant amount of work with Columbia Gas and others. Are you that's are you charged with accumulating the the data, the statistics, the analysis of, of potential savings that have been made due to the, your weatherization? Program? Yeah, I think there's a there's some metrics that they have to keep track of. They have a whole, you know. I mean, there's a. a I mean, Marianne knows from when she went out and met with neighbors and her, you know, there's a bushel basket of services that somebody can right. pick from and each of them gets quantified to yeah. see what, that, what difference that mm -hmm. makes. So our guys, our, our folks will go in and do everything from, you know, they'll do, they'll do everything from light bulbs right up to putting in a new boiler out. There was a person in town right here in the city owned, owned a home living on, I think, $18,000 a year in Social Security income. They owned a duplex. Both boilers went in the duplex. That's not very much money. No, not eighteen thousand well, dollars a year. Well, it doesn't cover two boilers. No. <laughs> um, you know, obviously getting rental income from one of them, mm -hmm. but um, you know, really kind of desperate. The person qualified for fuel assistance. 
and because they fully qualify for fuel assistance, they qualify for a state, a special state utility program that allow uh, re replacements of burners for one, for one to three families, I think it was, um, if you were the owner, and even if you had a tenant. Uh -huh. So we, we were able to work with that person to replace both boilers for free. Wow. And those, those, I mean, both furnaces, and those furnaces that were there were so inefficient that they were spewing, you know, gas into mm -hmm. the environment. I mean, it wasn't, wow. there was a benefit not just to the pocketbook of the person, but there was an environmental benefit to having those those, those burners guess. replaced, right? Oh. So, so that that turned out to be a good thing. But I could, you know, in every community, we've got a story like that. They got it for free. Wow. And not and no taxpayer dollars went into that. That was ratepayer dollars through the utility companies. That's that wonderful. They had pledged to have come back to help clean up the environment with these old boilers that are there. Yeah, that's wonderful. So, but we got a story like that everywhere. But I'm worried. Mm -hmm. Well, so for FY13. You guys are. We're budgeting at 100 percent of revenue for us. You are. Yeah. Yeah. And 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 keeping fingers crossed. Damn the torpedoes. Damn the torpedoes. But it's true. And, and, but, but we're you know we also know that if, if we lose money we'll have to make the requisite cuts to, to stay ahead of that. If we lose eight percent we're going to have to look at what does that mean in terms of staff? What does that mean in terms of other exactly. costs? And do well, we have to shut sites, etc. As you do triage. Right. You. At some point, reducing staff renders the the program services useless or moot at that point. At some level, that you, you more difficult. But I mean, so I mean, I mean, if you down to one staff member to cover a vast region and you yeah. can't reach Which your, your I mean, census, then as I said, that's why we we're out of the business of we we're, we're right. moved yes. out of the business of doing the vouchers because at some point, it's too big a region to cover. Mm -hmm. Where it doesn't make sense mm -hmm. to be covering. 1,400 square miles with three people. We did it. They did it before I was there, and they've been doing it for a number of years. I just, I was not comfortable. In addition, the state was going to a new system that we were not fully comfortable that was going to work. I mean, mm -hmm. it just felt like. Do you realize the net savings? Probably. I mean, I no, realize you no, lose this no. five million fact, dollars no, in vouchers, but. No, no. I mean, it doesn't save us any money. So, so. We lose money because we had administrative costs that were paid for partly by right, that right. that we have to reduce. So I'm worried about that fuel program. Well, I mentioned to Marianne, you know, three years ago or four years ago, we had 22 people working in the fuel program. We now have six. I know. It's awful. Right. So we have a lot of folks who call people like Marianne. They call you saying, I never can get anybody on the phone. Mm -hmm. can't get anybody on the phone. And they're wonderful. Six people. Yeah, they're really good. Mm -hmm. And what we, we have an automated phone system now for people who... And most people can manage it fine, but some people just really can't manage the automated phone system. Charge and notes. So we joke, we joke that we all work for fuel because eventually somebody will call everybody looking for help and mm -hmm. we figure it out. A guy came in today who was looking for help. He has, his boiler isn't work, his, his furnace isn't working. He probably needs a cleaning. Oh. He's eligible because he's a fuel assistance client, but he couldn't figure out how to get a call back, so he just showed up. I said, well, come on, we'll go. I know we'll I talk, left another. We'll go talk to somebody about it. We found, I found the right person for him. So I left a message today to for, Trace. For Trace. Yeah, for another resident. Big time. Yeah. Going we, off on employment in three weeks, no money. Yeah, so, and there's two ways, of, I mean, there's two different ways is in the right way. But we send out a bunch of applications for people to re, re up if they were had before. Anybody can apply who's new. And then, but people have heat in their. He included in the rent we get to afterwards. We don't do them right away. We start with the people who are paying their own heat. Yeah, well, that's right. what this is. Right, and then there's also a moratorium for people who have utility heat, gas, and electric. But if you have oil or delivered fuels of any kind, like at my house, I'm on propane. Mm -hmm. Right, so if you have propane, oil, wood, yep. there's no moratorium. But yeah, the gas and oil. electric can't. It can't turn you off to April 15th. Right. You need yeah. to wait till May. Propane right. doesn't show up. It doesn't but, show up. But if you run out of propane, if you run out of oil, you run out. There's yeah, nothing that's that, it. That's it. So we have relationships with some fuel companies. But, you know, if you get $600 in your, in your, in, for your yearly fuel assistance, that's, what, one tank of oil? <laughs> that's about it. Right. So that's a big problem. We really strongly suggest to people, try to fill your tank first and then get us for the second tank. There you go. You know, try to Makes use sense. your money to do the first yep. tank. But it's going to be a tough year, and, and I'm worried about the um, 
community development block grants. I'm worried yeah, about, I'm worried that. about that. Look so at Bill, what we did last year and the year before. Well, I, I believe that's the if sequestration occurs, then CDBG grants would probably be one of the first things to go. I think well, it would be. Eight and a half percent of that thing yeah. to start. Yeah. To start. But, you know, there, there's a need to rethink all of this. There's a need to really think about this stuff. You know, what is. You know, at the state level, CDBG comes in. We, Northampton and Northampton is the only entitlement community in the two counties that we work with. Mm -hmm. The rest go through the state program. And a few of them aren't going to apply this year because it's too, it's very complex. That's a problem for us because we depend on the 15% that they get on the human service side of the yep. grant right. to pay for food pantries. Mm -hmm. right? So we have to figure out now where we're going to go get money to staff and stock those food pantries. They're not going to apply because it's too complicated. You have to have a bricks and mortar project. Right. right. So what if you don't have a brick and mortar project? I mean, every year, these are small towns. They don't mm -hmm. necessarily every year have a brick and mortar project. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize that. Amazing. No, just like you have to spend 20% admin, 50% social services, 65% um, uh, brick and mortar, mm -hmm. same thing for the small towns. So, you know, they do senior housing, they do upgrades on their facilities, et cetera, yeah. et cetera. But at some point, you know, it becomes... Yeah, yeah. but that's, that's what I was talking about before, is, you know, you know at what, what's the threshold at which you say that this is no longer worth the effort to invest in that? I mean, I wish they pooled that money and said, you know, a, a group pool. of six or eight pound, towns could go together right. and... R fix a road that goes from Williamsburg to Chesterfield, you know, oh, no, or, that's or whatever, you know. I mean, there's, I wish there was a way to fix that. We should have, like, county government or something like that. Sort of a I, was, I, was, <laughs> I was a proponent of, uh, uh, I would be a proponent of real county government. Right. Mm -hmm. But not what we had, which was, I don't know what it was. Oh. But it wasn't good. Oh. So, so, uh, so I'm happy to, uh, you know, any time, come back and fill you really? in. Really? Oh, great. And, um, I was just going to ask you that about yeah. coming back. Sure. When would you like to come back? Uh, why, don't you, why don't we say another six to eight months? Give us well, some time. Well, about yeah. June and July. Also, um, you, I handed out, when I handed that out, you see that we now finally have a Facebook page. My friend Jesse Dean will be really mad at me if I don't see you. Please like us on Facebook. We're trying to get to 1,200 people. How many people you got so far? I think we have 60. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's me. We just, we just started way. yesterday. You're a juggernaut. 60. All right. There you go, Bill. Look <laughs> at that. It's me. I'm, I'm on it right now. Yeah. I'm going to. Good. You can put down that Mary Claire with her. Yeah. Well. Tells us all about it. I, I, we're, uh, we're, we're hoping to use that as a way to, I mean, many of our programs already use that. They use Facebook as a way to communicate with clients. Mm -hmm. And we're hoping to use this as a different way to communicate with people about what's going on in that program. Some people, that's the way that they do a lot of their communication now. So, social media. Is do you great. have a lot of veterans, women and men? We have a lot of veterans that use our services. I would say, especially around fuel assistance, and and actually the Vita program has a significant okay. number of, of vets. Uh, I would, you know, Westover does their own Vita program, so we don't see as many of them. Yeah. But yeah, we we have definitely have vets, and uh, Steve Connor has worked with um, folks from our agency very closely over the years. He works he hard. Really and uh, don't forget, Steve Kahn is a community action guy. Oh, yes. He started with me. Yep. He's hard working. He worked at, he was my cook when I ran the Amherst Community Center. Yeah. This, this community action, this, what's go to my it? web, go to my site and then right. click on the picture that says right. community action okay. and you'll get it. Because there's a, there's that, a few of them. That's it right there, facebook.com. Yeah, no, that's, that's. It really is a pleasure having you. Well, here. thanks. Uh, thanks for inviting me. Oh, so you just and we learn more. Your, today. your Facebook page is dissing Mitt Romney all over the place. No. Oh. <laughs> I, don't know what that is. I just was putting up factual. <laughs> oh, yeah. factual How about show us some That's all I was doing. <laughs> it's all facts. Oh. Actually, EJ e. Dion wrote the column I tried to write. Oh. Well, that's why he gets paid the big bucks. Oh, you, yeah. you did just fine. He, he wrote the column I charge you. I'm going to have to, you know, call it the landing the editorial advice. All right. Well, so at least, least you're out there. You. I'm having a little PTSD being in here. Right. That's why I wanted to give you a lot of time. <laughs> it's 
so you can tell us all about the program. <laughs> I gotta get out of here now. Yeah. It's Hi. giving me the willies. It's giving her a willie. <laughs> I haven't shipped the willies. You better watch out. You might get on duty. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm off duty. I haven't well. watched you guys once. <laughs> <laughs> me either. You don't want to watch us. <laughs> You're not missing a lot. <laughs> oh, oh, ouch, ouch. Is that one yours, huh? All right. This is mine. So we're going to go on. <laughs> Are you? Yeah. Are you going up to the high school? Supposed to hit the road tomorrow for a couple of days. Oh. Go to New Hampshire? I think Virginia. Virginia. Wow. Virginia. That's all like fun? Are you doing door to door? No, they want people who were mayors when he was president. Oh, good. Excellent. Okay. Okay, good. Yeah. Well, good luck with that, man. Who's got nice the dog? Huh? Where's the dog? I thought maybe with a um, a daycare. That dog is not allowed. That dog goes to daycare in Florence, and she's not allowed to stay with anybody else, but either me or you know who. Yep. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Wait, <coughs> time. I learned a lot about community action. I learned. A lot. Hi, Julie. Hi, Judith, come Hi, on Sheila. right up. Hi, Sheila. Hi, Sheila. Sorry, Hi, Sheila. Sheila. Judith is on the agenda. Sheila is my teacher. <laughs> Sheila. Sheila. This is Sam and Fong. Hello. Uh, How Sam. come I have Judith down? You have Judith down, but she wasn't able to make it. She had a competing meeting. Oh. So she sent me. So you're yeah, taking she, her place. Right. So Pseudo, Judy. Judith sent an email to that back in okay. so Sheila. Was coming, so. Sheila. Sheila Murphy, if you need to write it down. What's your last name? Murphy. Murphy, that's it. Thank you. Well, thank you for taking her place. Yes, my pleasure. Yes. And there may be some another student or two who yeah. come in. That's okay. A lot of students wanted to come tonight, but it's tricky timing with work and family obligations. I know Judith and I had um, some lengthy um, talks on the phone about what she wanted to talk about, okay. and she said that she would be speaking on what is the problem we are trying to solve with our literary class, okay. how are we trying to solve it, how well are we doing solving the problem, in other words, the successful outcomes of our classes. And then she also said that she was going to bring students to speak about their experiences in the program. Right. Okay. And here. who are our students? I'm Sam. Thank you for being here. Yeah, I am Paul. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Yeah. And I just wanted to let you know, this is um, our Councilor at Large, Council President, Bill Dwight. I'm City Councilor Marianne Labarge from Ward 6. And this is Mary Larkins. And she does the um, videoing of the meetings, and it goes on the website. Ready, Steve. Ooh, you can see it on the website. Oh. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> well, Thank you. Um, I, I just made up some copies of some of our flyers this fall that, sort of, that kind of show you what we're, what we're doing. Can we have one more for Council yes. of Casey? Yes. And I don't know if you can. Hold on, I'll read that. Get that to the... You know what, Bill? I should have asked Mary Claire for one more of these. For oh, I'll give up mine. Why this? Why Oh, good. Why that one? So I can give it to the um, counselor, Tracy. Thank you, Lida. that adults who do not have a high school credential 
the problems that they face. Okay. And um, the main way that we do that is we have uh, adult basic education classes that uh, help people to achieve that high school credential or to improve their English language skills, their reading, writing, math skills, uh, if, they, if, if they don't actually need the credential. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people want it, of course, and a lot of people need it. In addition to that, in addition to needing the GED, uh, to be successful, to, to really to earn a living wage, uh, you need more than that as well. So um, our services also include what we call education and career counseling or career advising. And we and through those services, we work with people uh, to help them identify some goals, figure out what the steps are they need to take to reach them, and also uh, to explore what might be available to them out there. Hmm. Because often uh, there there is limited knowledge of um, jobs or careers or fields that they could work in and that they could be trained in. Okay. So, um, you know, just quickly, one in seven adults in the Pioneer Valley don't have a high school credential. And um, so that is, th that's, those are the people that we work with. And um, we feel that getting a GED, we have a, we call our, our transitions, our education career advising program, the passport to success, because we feel that getting the GED and then going beyond is the passport to success. Right, GED is not easy to do either. No. <laughs> and um, I'll start taking you through some of the some of the um, the things here, the uh, flyers here. But uh, we do we we are an agency. We have five classroom sites in um, Franklin and Hampshire County, and we serve about 500 adult students per year in all of our sites combined. Um, and we're helping those students to get a GED and to move on to jobs and also to higher education. 500? That's a lot. We serve 500 students a year. It takes people multiple years to reach these goals. Mm -hmm. So we do have a lot of, um, you know, the 500 people we served last year, a lot of them are back with us this year. Now, say once they, how long does it take to do the GED? Everybody's different. Everybody is different. That's exactly right. Um, we see people who are pretty much ready to do it, uh, and we uh, see people who've been with us three, four, five years. And I mean, the math is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, it is. <laughs> okay. Our classes are free. Our funding comes mainly from uh, the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education, but they do not fund us 100%. How much do they fund you? Uh, it's around three quarters. Mm -hmm. And it, is, it leaves us a substantial amount of money to raise to fill the gap. Mm -hmm. And we do count on support from the towns that we're in and from the communities that we serve. Right. Actually, I was going to say this to the end, but I'll say it now since we're talking about it. Uh, this year started a new grant cycle for us. We have a five-year grant with the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education. And also, um, you might be aware as city people that there have been cuts to CDBG funds, particularly in rural, more rural areas than Northampton. So overall, our agency, between um, the new funding from BSEE and the cuts in CDBG funds this year, we are down 20% in our funding from previous years. So right now, um, the goal, that Judith, Judith's goal as the executive director, is to stabilize our agency at a smaller size, but to continue to provide really excellent services and um, to our students, and also to try to preserve uh, as close to full-time jobs, as many close to full-time jobs 
as you can for so instead of 500 learning. students bring it down well we will probably serve the same number <coughs> of people. we will serve them our classes will be um, will be offered I gotcha. um, they'll be shorter yep. in length and they also will be uh, we used to run through the end of June and this year we'll be running only through the middle of May I haven't heard anything about the CDBG grants yet and how much we're getting cut. Well, the, we were actually, some of the, Claire even touched on this a bit too, but a lot of the regions that they serve don't necessarily, can't, will not be applying for the CDBG or the equivalent of CDBG funds because of the, the various constraints about development projects. And then consequently, Everyone's anticipating, even though it hasn't been stated yet, that everyone's anticipating a cut and perhaps a significant cut, at least 8% if the sequestration happens. What happened they, to Amherst? They got cut. Well, Did you yeah, see that? Everyone, 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 well, I, I thought you were just talking about whatever happened to Amherst. Well, what we, no, we experienced with the CDBG, um, there was a big article in the paper. Yeah, mm -hmm. like for instance, the town of Ware was not even funded right. by CDBG, and we used to get. Um, oh, we used to get a substantial amount of money yeah. in where to serve um, because you know that's a very rural, uh, very poor. I think right after election, <laughs> well, then we'll start seeing some movement. <laughs> like they'll probably went around. I think it's, just, it's where we're going to see the movement. In oh. which direction? Yeah. Yes. Right. Yeah. That depends on yeah. who gets into office. Yeah. yeah. So um, let's see. What else do you want to know? We our classes. Let's, let's go through. Um, oh, this is just a little tear off in case you want to hang it up anywhere. But um, I work in both the Northampton and Amherst classrooms. So I try to do outreach through those together. But our classes are free. We have three levels of classes. So we start, we, we can serve people who really are beginning leaders, you know, reading at, you know, a first or second grade level. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, and then we have a what we call sort of an intermediate level class, which operates at about the middle school level, and then our GED preparation class. Now, there was talk about either, was it Greenfield or Westfield State coming in? They, they haven't, have they? GCC coming in to the literacy project? To, to the well, building. To the building, building. yes. Yeah. Okay, so... Um, so the James House is, you know, where we are housed, right. thanks to the city's support, mm -hmm. and we're very grateful for that. Yeah, <laughs> it's we fabulous hard space. On that one. Yes, fabulous space, and you know, it really is keeping us. It is really keeping the doors open. It's nice, especially open there. in light of the funding cuts that we've had. Mm -hmm. um, so we have in. We have had, uh, GCC has offered, is now offering the second developmental class at the James House. In the spring, they offer developmental reading, and this fall, they're offering developmental writing. Holyoke Community College is um, scheduled to offer developmental math class in the spring. Oh. So, what these classes are, um, they're developmental classes given by the community colleges, and what happens is when a lot of people go to community college, community colleges have a pretty open admission process. Mm -hmm. You do have to now have a high school diploma or a GED. That's a recent change. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but then they give everybody a placement test. And if you don't place into the college classes, you have to take developmental classes to get you to the level to be able to take the community college classes. And really? those classes cost the same amount as a community college class. When did they start that? <laughs> it's been going on for a while, I think. Uh, but the, the average cost of a developmental class uh, with materials and everything is in the 800 to to $1,000 wow. range. And so uh, people who pass the GED, who pass it, there's, you know, with sort of minimum scores, often do not place into college level classes. So they have to do, take these developmental classes. And, and how um, long does it take them to go through that in order to get into the regular it classes? It can take a while because they could have to take up to five developmental classes. So, you know, that's, that, that takes, well, the, the 
truth, the truth of the matter is, is that most people who place in developmental, developmental classes don't make it. Very few of them actually make it into college level classes. Well, what about like University Without Walls? That's, that's actually a different program. That's, is that's it? for people with some, actually some college experience. Because oh. uh, um, I know when I went to Ohio Community, I mean, I started right off the bat after so many years of raising children in that I went mm -hmm. back and I took um, intro to art music and I took English 101 mm -hmm. in the summer. That was the biggest mistake I did. It was well, like, oh my goodness, I mean, first like, time. It sounds like you placed into those, those college level classes, which is great. And some of our students will, but many of them won't. So the idea at the James House was to provide some of those classes free of charge so people could get a leg up going into college. And that's, that's mm. happening, so that's mm. really great. Um, I want to be mindful of the time because I want our sure. students to be able to speak as well. Uh, so, um, so, you know, we feel, I mean, I think, I think most people would agree, and it's pretty clear that the... Um, you know, the qualifications people need to get good paying jobs just keep going, just keep getting higher, and just keep going up. So the Literacy Project, you know, is the place where people in Hampshire County can mm -hmm. come to get some help with getting the qualifications that wow, they need. that's great. And uh, I'd be happy, if you have any other questions, I'd be happy to answer them, but I would love to um, yeah, why don't we have our, spe speak. our students speak. So, um, oh. so I have one more chance. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> we thought we would just, I, I mean, I think what you want to know is a little bit about what they're doing. Yes. Okay. And what is... Sure. Um, my name is Sam. I love, I like, I don't know if you, I have a class, take the class, CED class in Latter-day project and to in order to get um, my you know the new career I have to get my GED that's um, you want to tell a little bit about you you're in the she Sam and Fong are both in the middle of a big life change yeah that's my first year <laughs> you know you know I am getting my GED that's my dream I want it so bad so um, oh. but but Fong has um, Fong, Fong and Sam both have a lot of business experience. They ran, or they own their own restaurant for many years. Where? You still run the restaurant? Um, we quit uh, in June because we've been there long and getting old and the, uh, you know, ha um, physical problem. So we're looking for something new, and in, in order to work a lot of hours, and we don't have time for our family. I cannot handle, I cannot go on my line because there are a lot of guilt. So, but I still need to look a job. It's not easy for us for second language, you know. So, where was her restaurant? Is the one in Southampton? Southampton? Yeah. It's been here around uh, mm -hmm. 17 more years. Wow. So, you, uh, your restaurant you've had for 17 years? Yeah, more than that. More, more than 17 years. Okay. Wow. Almost a part of her whole life. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah, long hour. I don't mind, but you know, because uh, the family and physical problem. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So you want to get your GED? Yeah. And what what were you interested in doing now after you get your GED? Uh, that's a lot. The career I want to do is, um, if possible, the count and. Yeah, then Which you know already very well because you've been doing your own accounting. <laughs> right? Yes, yes. yes, yes. Yeah. I mean, are you frustrated by the fact that you actually you both have a lot of skills already and you can't use them for a job because in your you haven't got your GED? The language, English. And then and the, in the, in the, in the yes. English as a second language. Yes. So because you're probably more qualified than many other people out there who probably have pretty good jobs as a result, but because you don't have a GED, you don't get to do that just yet. That's right. Hmm. And it, how, so you will do well in the math section. 
I'm thinking. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, possibly I, 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 was, I was doing good in, in, in China. I've been here 20 years, but when I graduated high school in China, math is my favorite one. So wow. you, okay. yeah. And then you've been doing math with your job oh, yes, as well. Yes. And, and so you have all these skills that, that, that a lot of students that you're studying with don't have. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So there is one advantage right there. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. They taught me good English. I said, wow, compared with them, you know, I need a long way to go. <laughs> but uh, they still, you know, and have a uh, little bit of math problem. But I need to take that past that. So how long have you been working on your GED? Just, just this year. Just started. Oh, just, yeah. just started. Just started. Yes. Oh. I'm looking for because I um, I start my job and there's not many much time for me to look for a GD class and I and I heard from my customer from uh, Sierra Space she recommended that for me so um, I leave a message for Sierra and she called me back in the first the day before we started GD class <laughs> yeah. so I'm so lucky so happy for it I'm I only missing one day because uh, I get to do uh, um, a doctor appointment. When do you, when will you feel comfortable to take the test? Yeah. Oh, I want it this year. This year. Like that. <laughs> this year. Yes. So how many times a week do you go to classes? Five days, I try to five days. Wow, that's good. She could, She's determined. Yeah. <laughs> She's well, if it's any comfort to you, Sheila made me take the GED test. <laughs> I have my, I didn't have a high school diploma until um, four months ago. Wow, you'll come with me. <laughs> I, I took the GED class. I did very badly in the math. Very badly. I think it's hard. Wow. <laughs> I snuck trigonometry in uh -huh. there. Oh, I know. So, I but heard. The, Wasn't stat in there, too? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> but it, it's, it, um, you're working with a great group of people that I think, and I think you both have a very good chance of passing it. And it's quite satisfying. It is quite satisfying. Yes, you know, it's so nice. You know, it's cost nothing, and the professor is very nice. Yeah, like talking like friends, you know. Have you become friends with other students? Yes. <laughs> very nice. Everyone say hi, greeting for you, everyone. Yeah. We are hungry in the morning. Yes. So I, I admired the most was the sense that the students were all supporting each other. That they, they, because they were all, unlike most schools, my wife over there, she teaches at Toyo Community College, but um, a lot of schools, people go to school because they feel they just have to. That their parents want them to go to school, <coughs> so they go to school. And what they're getting out of the classes is they're just sitting there and they hope they pass the grade. But everyone in this program needs to and wants to go to school and wants to help other people want to go to school mm -hmm. and want to get the um, GED. So that's, Sheila's pretty lucky in that all of her students want to learn. That's, not a lot of teachers get that. <laughs> I mean, most of the teachers get maybe, maybe a quarter of the people want to learn and the rest of the people just want to get it over with. I think we are all the same to looking for the road, the road way hard, right. and and I see that uh, those I I thought that's only old people, but I saw that like, you know some of haven't had like young kids. I right. said, wow. Mm -hmm. I, said, I I have to tell my my son who's taking colleges, he's kind of like uh, you know or something. I said I tell them as soon as I learned that I saw that I said you know I don't want to go back for high school. Right. You have to work hard now. You know it's not easy. To go back there, so I not only learn GD, I also learn I learn from the other kids. So that's very different. that's true. That's very important. You learn from the people you're working mm -hmm. with, yeah. the, the other students as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I well, I, I can't say enough about the literacy project anyway. It's, 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 oh, I think <laughs> it's great. <laughs> and, and I think it's the best thing that's happened to our city. I really do. Well, it's, it's a, you know, it's. It's the, wonderful. The big That's concern, of course, is um, what's going to happen with funding. 
and it's going to have more funding. Um, you, and, and Jill, you were saying that you were essentially going to be, in order to downsize, Judith is looking to eliminate more part-time jobs and then and keep the, the full-time employees for the most part. Yeah, keep people at, as full-time full as possible. You know, what often happens, I think, in, in all kinds of human service agencies is there are a lot of, like, temporary part-time jobs. And that ultimately erodes right. the quality of what you're doing. Uh, we've been fortunate at the Literacy Project to have full-time positions, a lot of adult-based education uh, classrooms across the state don't. Hmm. Well, another phenomenon that I noticed was the volunteers that come who are former students in that case, mm -hmm. and their, their volunteer base is as devoted as anybody. We, we have a phenomenal volunteer uh, base, uh, members from the community, students who come in and, uh, you know, have been with us. They come in every week, work with students, and they've been with us. You well, know, some people are, are for a year, but a there are a number of people who are here with us year after year. All right. Well, she looks very, very determined. Mm -hmm. She has a goal, and I can see that she's climbing that mountain, and you will get that GED this year to watch. <laughs> Thank you. I want it. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, that, and, and I think, you know, Fong and Sam will both come back probably and help, too. I would imagine you would be very good at helping other people once you oh, get yeah. your GED. You get my, my I think about that, too. Yeah. I think you'd be very helpful. I think yeah. it, there's, there's clearly a lot of people in the community who could use the, the, yeah. the knowledge that you both already have. That, that, and, 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 it, and as Sheila pointed out, it's a whole lot easier to understand math if it actually is doing something. If I'm writing down numbers on paper, it doesn't mean anything to me. But if you're figuring out a budget and food portions and mm -hmm. purchasing mm -hmm. and things like that, you actually have a real-life experience with all those math problems. And that, that, that's something a lot of students are missing. You could be very helpful with that, I think. I love to. Mm -hmm. Waiting for it. <laughs> and, and I just would like to, I'd like to um, underscore the fact that, you know, our programming is really focused on helping people figure out what they're going to do after their GED as well. Oh, yeah, that's a big move. Right. And that, has a, that is something that has been changing in our field. Since, since I've been in it, which is about eight years, and mm -hmm. um, it's a very positive change. So transitioning beyond just giving someone a piece of paper and then yes. that's yeah. the end of it. So we now have a, a class one day a week that's devoted to that. I saw that. I was um, reading that. Exploring your future. <laughs> and, you know, really learning about what the possibilities are and learning what you might be, what you might be suited for, best suited for, and interested in. Could I ask you something on this education and career pathways? Down in the bottom, it says the Literacy Project provides accommodations for persons with disabilities. What do you mean by that? Well, we don't discriminate. Um, we don't discriminate on the basis of disabilities, and we, um, when when people have disabilities, we we can provide reasonable accommodations. Um, people have to be able to uh, function as part of a group, yeah. independently as part of a group, but otherwise we can, like for instance, we had a person who had a severe nerve damage um, and couldn't really keyboard, so we uh, had the dictation software installed on the okay. computer, so that he could use it that, huh. use the computer that way, as one example. Have, um, in the city, we have a committee on disabilities, and it's amazing, you know, they want to do so much. Right now we're working very hard of having the restaurants, I think we have seven or eight now, who are working with the bid of doing the braille menus and the large menus. Oh, right. uh -huh. large print. <laughs> yes. yes. We use a photocopier for that. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Also, the James House is, is fully ADA conforming. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. it's, yes. it's, uh, it's a compliant building, one of the few municipal buildings in town. Wow. Uh, <laughs> no, I should have. 
um, you come in to the literacy project, come into the Committee on Disabilities and talk about the program. Sure, I'd be happy to. Uh huh. We also, this year, we have a special, um, our own special math class uh, to get people ready for those, even for those developmental classes, or to get them higher up in the developmental classes. So it's meeting once a week on Friday morning. And Sam's actually in that class because she's so good at math. I love mm -hmm. math. <laughs> oh. I want to explore oh. it. <laughs> math and terrifies me. Me too. <laughs> our classes are offered in the mornings during the week. And that surprisingly works very well for a lot of people. But there are some people it does not work well for uh, because they work during the day. Uh, so uh, there is also an opportunity for online learning uh, for people. It's, run, it's out of our Greenfield office. Uh, so that, you know, as, as long as a person can work independently, manage their own time, and has a computer with internet access, that's an option as well. But if you're going to college, depending on what you're going to major in, why would you need geometry and all that? Well, all, it, interesting, I mean, all colleges require a certain level of math. They just all require it. But there's also been research that has shown that um, college students of all kinds, their success can be determined by their ability to um, think in ways yeah, that well, are that's mathematical. that's true. <laughs> Even mm, for trigonometry. Majors, oh, so. goodness. And a couple of things we have going on this fall. Um, we, uh, it's an election year. Is it? <laughs> As you mentioned, <laughs> right? Oh, realize. no. So we have been helping people register to vote, and we're going to have, we're encouraging people to vote. We're going to have a pizza party to help them. Oh, that's, I like that. Remember to vote. And, um, and then, again, through the, the, the Northampton Community Education Consortium, we are having GED testing again this fall in November at the James House. Okay. So rock the boat, free pizza and beverages. That's neat. I like that. So uh, some of our students will vote for the first time. Uh, some of our students aren't eligible to vote, um, but would like to. Um, so we're just going to say. I mean, they're not of age? Or they are not of, um, they are not citizens. Oh, okay. That's, that does gotcha. yeah. But I can tell she's she's gonna get her GED. <laughs> yes. Thank you. I want I it. Can, I can see it. <laughs> You're determined. But because I'm walking too much, I have no time. Well, it's, <laughs> it'd be good for you to take it easy and actually have a job where you get to sit down most of the time. Yeah. 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 So it's, I, well, best of luck to you. Very good luck to you Thank both. Thank you. And, uh, and I, I share counselor with Lafarge as well, I'm pretty sure that with, with the help of these guys at Literacy Project, you would do quite well. So. Thank you. Now, what about it? We're going to hear from him. Fung is, um, he, Fung is actually taking our beginning reading, writing, and math classes. He has um, more English, a little more English to learn than Sam. It's not easy. <laughs> yeah, not easy. <laughs> Everything not easy. takes time, and don't get all upset. Just take it day by day. You'll learn. I came from a family who were Greek. And when they were all together, that's all they did was speak Greek. That's my dad's side. My mother's side, they were all Portuguese. Then if you put them all together, oh my goodness. <laughs> you couldn't talk to each other. <laughs> yeah. You couldn't talk to each other. Thank you. Well, thank, thank you, you Paul. Thank you, Sam. Thank You'll you do very, very well. Thank you. And thank you for being here and come back. Thank you, Sheila. Thanks, Sheila, yes, Sheila. thank you. I'll get a hold of you, Sheila, because maybe we'll invite you to the Committee on Disabilities. Sure. Um, that would be great. I can always be reached at that 584-6755 number. <laughs> yep. Okay. Thanks. All right, Sorry thank about you. the rain. Oh, yeah. I know. It has to rain sometimes. Thank yeah. you. For I suppose you're right. <laughs> thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Well, it looks like we don't have any more business.
Well, so I'll, I'll move to uh, adjourn. Aye. 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 Aye.